Happy holidays, everybody. Welcome and welcome back to the channel. Um, how many of us are sitting out there right now looking at back at the last 10 months of the year and saying, I wish I would have done this. I wish I would have done that and saying to ourselves next year, I'm going to do this without fail. Well, folks, those are the uh, New Year's resolutions that we all come up with every year. And we talk about how we're going to become superheroes in the coming year if we do these four or five things, just to find that at the end of the year, we haven't done those four or five things. We haven't done one or two of those things. And we find ourselves in the same place. Today, what I'm going to talk to you about is I'm going to talk to you about the, the framework that I use to set up my New Year's resolutions that's worked for me over about the last 20 years that helped me get to the place to where I was able to find financial independence. And it didn't happen all at once. It happened over a series of time. And eventually when the time came for me to have the serious conversations, all of those steps that I had done uh, led themselves uh, to that point. But for those of you that, that don't know, and this is the first time that you've been to the channel, I'm Sabado. And so my goal now is just to share my learnings and perspectives with you because as different as we might seem, we actually have a lot in common. And please know, and my expectation is never that you retire at the age of 51. My expectation is that you live your left best life. So on that note, let's go ahead and get started. So when you start looking at your life and you, you look at where it is that you want to go, the question that we have to ask ourselves is, are we trying to get to the same place or to a different place by doing the same things? And if we go back and we take a look at our lives, the chances are yes. Uh, I was just on the phone with a good friend of mine who was having some He's single and he's trying to find somebody to date, but he keeps finding the wrong ones. Uh, where are you meeting these people? Where are you meeting these individuals? How are you going about finding them? Are you going to the same dating websites? Are you going to the same watering holes? Are you using the same pickup lines, meeting people? Because if so, you're going to find people that are going to be about the same. It's interesting because as an HR person, and I think I've mentioned that I've been an HR person or was an HR person for a lot of years, when you weren't able to hire the right people, a lot of times that came down to your selection criteria. And so now what I focus on with him is what are your selection criteria and are you doing anything different? And I was happy to hear that he was doing some things different, but it got me really thinking about for all the people out in the YouTube universe looking to perhaps find financial independence or get the job they want or live the life that they want to live, you know, what are some of the things that I did that I could help you out with? So I'm going to, I'm going to go through those. Uh, in the form of New Year's resolutions, but they may not all be New Year's resolutions. They just might be things that you say, I'm going to do. But I know that a lot of us look at the word resolution and it's a big thing and it takes a big thing in order for us to stay motivated. So that's why I'm tying them to New Year's resolutions. So on that note, let's get into it. So when you start to look at a framework, it's not laying out all of your New Year's resolutions for you. That would be too easy. And I just don't have enough of an understanding uh, for each of you to come up with an expectation for how you're going to live the, the coming year. However, I do have a framework, and that framework breaks into three areas. And the first area is the financial area. Um, the first one being something to the effect of, I'm going to save X percentage of my salary uh, for the next year, and I'm going to put that into my 401k, or I'm going to put that into my investments. Now, one of the reasons I think this one is so critical is money is like time. You never really have enough of it. And so if we continue to wait until we have the money to be able to put money away, then guess what? You're never going to be able to put money away. As opposed to, hey, I'm going to stretch a little bit. And instead of buying a six pack, I'm going to buy a four pack so I could take these two beers, that $10 and put that away. So that way that $10 becomes $12, $20, $50, $100. $50. If you don't commit to doing a small step, then you're never going to get anywhere. And so, uh, as an example, one of the things that I do, and I'm doing this year, and I'll, I'll be fully transparent, is I'm doing a review of all of my subscriptions. I was watching this app, or this commercial, and it was talking about this app that goes through and it finds all your subscriptions. Well, guess what? You could do that on your own. Just take the time to go figure out what your uh, subscriptions are, and then you delete all of them. You know, another example is something that I did last year is I have this real big thing about fraud. So I always want to stay away from fraud. And I don't want to make myself a target. So the number one way that people find information out about you is online. So what I did last year is I saw there were companies that would wipe out your entire online history. And I figured, how do they do that? And I realized there's only a few sites that carry all of that information. So I went on those sites and opted out. So if somebody were to search for me online, they wouldn't find me except for this Ask Sabado channel. 
Um, so the, the second uh, piece of the framework is behavioral. Um, you know, you've got to find the one thing about yourself that you want to change. And again, I, I think we are all perfect in the way that we were made and who we are. But if we're telling ourselves that we don't need to do anything better, then we're either grossly misinformed or we're incredibly arrogant. So let's get over ourselves. Let's look at the fact that we need to do something different next year in order for us to get to where it is that we want to be. Because the reality is, is a lot of us, we're just not there. And it's not because we're doing anything wrong. And sometimes it's not even because we know we're doing anything uh, that's working counterproductive for us. But we just want to change it. We just want to be better. We want to feel better. We want to have more peace of mind. Um, so one of the things, again, as, as I look at my um, resolutions or my goals for myself, is I'm really working on lowering expectations. Uh, I'm, I am not here to tell you that finding financial independence is easy. I'm not going to, I'm not here to tell you that finding success in your career is easy. And even once you get to that success or once you reach financial independence, there's still pieces about it that are more difficult. And so if I were to tell you that about myself, I would be incredibly disingenuous and I'm just not going to do that. I'm always going to tell you the truth. And so one of the things that I want to do is because I knew that it took me a lot to charge hard and I had to do a lot in order to get to where I am, that one of the byproducts of that is I figured everybody can do it. And so I figured I'd have expectations of everybody to do the things that I do. But what I've found is that by having those incredibly high expectations of other people, the upshot of that is people let me down. I get frustrated. I get aggravated. I wish people would do things different. And the one thing my wife tells me all the time is everybody's not you. And so I can either continue down the path of having these incredibly high expectations of people and finding myself frustrated time and time again, or I could change my expectation sets of other people. And it's interesting because I was trying to figure out, you know, it sounds good to say minimize your expectations, but I'm always, as I've mentioned before, I'm always a what does it mean and how do you do it kind of guy. And I saw something the other day that really made a lot of sense. And they said that when you have expectations of people, it's because you have an expectation of the outcome of whatever it is that they're doing. And if you want to minimize your expectations, don't focus on the outcome or that somebody does something or that the output is X, Y, or Z. Just focus on the process. And so that way you go from enjoying the outcome to just enjoying the process of getting there. Most of the time, as I've mentioned to you before, as I always say, it's not what I'm doing, but who I'm doing it with. And so it's not about whether or not I get the magic egg or I get to that point, but it's what's the journey that I've taken to get to that place. And so I'm really going to focus this year on my um, on, on managing my expectations with other people. And I, I think that'll bring me to a, a higher level of, of happiness and enlightenment. And then the third one that I think you should have in there, and I, this is the last one, I think this is the most important, is having an educational component about the framework. Um, you know, learn something that you didn't know or something you want to know better. So uh, as an example, and I, again, I'll give you an example of me. So one of the things that I've done for a lot of years and I've done fairly well is I've gardened and I've been pretty productive as a gardener. I grow all kinds of stuff. I'm My friends laugh at me because I'm the guy that has an avocado tree that I didn't know I planted. But then I also grew peanuts a couple of years ago. And yes, I did say it like peanuts. So I grew peanuts a couple of years ago and I grow everything in between and people were trying to figure out how do you do that? How do you do that? How do you do that? And I just, I do the research. But the one thing that I'm not is at this point right now, I haven't reached a level where I objectively have information that I can teach to others to help them be a better gardener. I can teach them what I've done that's worked, but I don't know if it's working because I was lucky or because of the science behind it. So this year I'm going into the master gardener program. One of our university systems in, in, uh, in the state of California has a master gardener program. And so I'm joining the master gardener program and they teach you about soil. They teach you about oxygen. They teach you about uh, pH, teach you about different types of pests. And they teach you A to Z about gardening. So then I'll have the opportunity not just to be a good gardener in my backyard, but to also go out into the community and help other people become better gardeners. So. You know, so I, I think when you so when when I when I look at the course of this next year, if I were to go any further than those three, then 
I don't know that I'd be able to accomplish them. And we end up right where we are at the beginning of the year with most people. I used to go to the gym. And so on the January 2nd, January 3rd, all the way up until February, you'd have the gym packed with all of these people with these New Year's resolutions. Well, guess what? By February, they're all gone and people aren't going to get the results they want because they're not doing the things they thought they need to do. And so my approach has always been, let me just take a, a methodical, slow approach and let, help myself get to, to where it is that I want to be. And eventually I'm going to get there. And I think it's evidenced by this YouTube channel. Um, when I started this channel back in April of uh, this past year of 2024, I had no idea that I was going to even get one subscriber. But now not only do I have 100 plus thousand views, but I also have 500, almost 600 people that are subscribed. So I'm, I'm, I'm really excited about that being shown and true to action because it's, it's the small things. It's those little videos that I make where maybe I'm overexposed in the back or the color's not exactly right or I don't say or hit a point exactly that I want to hit and I could go and beat up on myself. But I knew that if I did it enough, I'd continue to grow and continue to reach more people. And the goal here is always just to try to help people understand and become inspired by my journey and nothing else. I'm not selling you anything and I'm not trying to make money off you in any way. I just want to make sure that other people, particularly people that look like me that may not have had the information on how to become uh, financially independent, they have access to that information. And if it helps people along, a bunch of people along the way, I think that's what it does, and I, and I think it's, it's easy to go out and look at a book and, and read a book and, and see a video of somebody that's totally different than you, but then when you look at a, a middle-class middle cat that just made some good decisions, well, you know, I think that's going to resonate with more people. So. so that's about all I had for today, but again, the three, uh, the three pieces of the framework that I use for my New Year's resolutions, and I'm going to use it this year, and if you, if you think they're useful, let me know, and I could continue to make sure that I uh, let you know about the progress of them. But, you know, they're financial. Uh, most of us, when we look at where it is that we want to be and where we are, one of the biggest differentiators is what we're doing financially. So make have a financial component of it. doesn't mean you're going to get rich in a year, but it does mean that you may be closer to getting to where it is that you need to be uh, by the time uh, year in. And plus the beauty of it is we're still in November. So you have a little bit of time to, uh, to cheat through the month of December. Number two is behavioral. Most of the world is reacting to us and we don't even know what their reactions are because we don't know what they're reacting to. And so, and if we look at what it is that we do, I'm sure each of us has one or two things that we wish we did different. One or two things we wish we're, we're different than, than the way they actually are. And, and look, it doesn't mean that you're beating up on yourself. It doesn't mean you have low self-esteem. In fact, in order for you to be vulnerable with yourself shows an elevated level of self-esteem, at least in my book. So I always work on a behavioral component because I know that I'm not perfect. And I, I get it. Some of you out there are. But for those of us that share in the journey, you know, and let me know. Let me know what are some of the things that you're going to work on behaviorally because those are things that may have been outside of my blind spot that – Maybe I'll work on too. Or, and if it's something that we can do together, we do it together and hold each other accountable because that's another way to get to a goal is by having accountability partners. And then the third one is just something educational. There was a point in my career for, for a long time, I would read a book a month just so I could read a book a month so I knew something different than I knew the, the month before. But now, because I have so much free time and because my time is my own, I want to continue to do things that make the community better, that help other people. And so uh, last year I taught myself how to make a YouTube channel. And so I think I've been fairly successful at that. This coming year, it's going to be the Master Gardener program. So I could, I could take that to a le the next level. Um, and then, I, you know, the following year, who knows? It might be something else. But if you, if you look at the financial pieces of your life, you look at the behavioral pieces of your life, and you look at the educational pieces of your life, and you do a small step on each of those, that's like compound interest for your life, and it's going to pay dividends. I guarantee it. So I'd like to know what some of your, uh, some of the things are that you're going to improve, some of your resolutions, and then let's talk about them through the course of the year. Leave them in the comments with how you're doing, and if you need some motivation, let me know, and I'll make some content around it because I think it's really important. It's Again, this world isn't about me having the best world for me. It's about having the best world for all of us, and my personal mission statement is to uplift the human condition in any way that I can. And so this is the way that I do it. So on that note, I'm going to go ahead and cut it short. But if you did find anything in this video useful, uh, please 
uh, subscribe to the channel, share the channel with some of your friends, like the content and hit the notification button. I know that's a lot of steps, so I'm not going to expect that you do them all. But I do think that, you know, if, if there's other people that you know that may benefit from this information, share this information with them. It doesn't cost them anything. I'm not going to try to sell them anything. And you're always going to get what you're going to get. And I try to put up content a couple times a week. I know this week's content I'm putting up a little bit late, but hey, it's a holiday. Give myself a reprieve since I don't get holiday pay or PTO anymore. So, all right. On that note, have a good rest of your day and I will talk to you soon.